Hello folks, welcome back. Thank you for joining me once again. Today I'm glad to say that we've got better lighting, better angle, better overall everything, and I'm super, super excited to say that I'm going to go ahead and start my channel off with the very first book being Alligator Smiling in the Sawgrass by Ira Ironmonger. I think that is one of the coolest author names I have ever seen. And it's illustrated by Sandra Davidson. And I just want to take a moment to really look at this cover and appreciate the art style. It's, it's very stylized, I will say, but it sort of makes one think of the traditional sort of art style that you would see in old-fashioned folk books. Uh, the name suggests something along the lines of a southern, I, w I wouldn't say southern gothic, but sort of southern parable, I would think. But uh, let's go ahead and dive on in. Here we've got our first page, which gives us a little taste of what we're in for with some swamp plants. And uh, here on the very first story page, we've got a little bit better view. And here we go. It was a quiet day for the great green alligator in the sawgrass swamp. The sky was that blue blue, which means the most perfect of all days. Serene weather, contentment. The sun was shining and the sweetest breeze in the world blew softly. For a hundred miles, there was mostly water, dark green water, and sawgrass. It was indeed an alligator's heaven. And if you guys hear anything in the background, that would be my little kitten running around and playing. In the very middle of the sawgrass swamp, the green alligator was switching his great tail. Then he gave a turn and heaved around to sun the other side. His eyes almost closed and he seemed completely and thoroughly relaxed. Except, except for one thing. He was smiling. And oh, what a smile that was. The smile of all smiles, so big, so smug, so cunning, so knowing and secret. It made others feel that their world was ridiculous and that the alligator's world was the real and only one. Now, I don't think he's really smiling in this picture. Doesn't really look like it to me. Maybe I'm wrong. But I will say that he does kind of look smug. So let's see why he's smug. The alligator in the sawgrass relaxed more and more. But he was looking, too. Out of the corner of his almost closed eyes, he saw a turtle. The turtle climbed cautiously out of the water onto the black muck of a smooth bank and settled himself quietly in the sun, turning his head, watching, watching. And then, as the sun relaxed him more and more, he sank blissfully on his belly and started stretching his legs way out in the air. Stretch, 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 just like crazy antennas from a round dome shell. That's a pretty cool uh, mental image there. Sort of makes you think of like a little UFO ship, which I guess he's the right shape for. The alligator opened his eye and smiled. Uh-oh. But the turtle saw the alligator and quickly slipped into the water and swam away. Quick thinking on the turtle's part. The alligator dozed, almost asleep, but not quite. For just then, he saw a green frog on a pickerel leaf. The frog's eye was solid gold, or so it seemed and golden stripes spread back from his head like parts of a shining armor. What a beauty he was with the sun shining on him, as if he had dipped into a treasure of molten gold, 
and carried this gold plating forever. I'll agree, that's a pretty handsome looking frog. I think it's pretty snazzy that he has on some armor there. Little by little, the alligator's eye opened, his smile deepened, and his sharp teeth were plain to see. But the frog saw the alligator, his gold faded, and he leaped into the water and swam away, just like our turtle buddy. Again, I think that's a pretty smart move. Then, the alligator looked as if he were really asleep. But out of the slits of his eyes, he saw a purple gallinule swimming in the water. I just want y'all to, <laughs> to think for a minute. And if you haven't heard of a gallinule before, what do you think it is? Oh, what a beautiful bird he was. What brilliant feathers and bright red bill. I don't think I've ever seen one of these guys before but they sound really pretty. The alligator smiled greedily, a toothy smile, but the purple gallinule spied the alligator and flew away in a low flight. Well, the way the author words this, and along with the illustration, you can almost hear the, the telltale... <laughs> of wings flapping, which I, I think is really cool, and it brings the book to life. Now a time came when there were no rains. No rains, and still no rains. This lasted so long that the water started to dry up and disappear. The black muck became brown and cracked and dry and still no rains. The animals of the swamp were nearly dead with thirst, for water is one thing that all animals need, even more than food. It's starting to look pretty desolate out there. Let's see what our animal friends do. It was a desperate time there in the sawgrass with the swamp so dry. Dry. But the great alligator knew what to do. He started to dig with his powerful legs down into the black muck. Now, I thought they just said that there wasn't any more black muck. He dug and he dug until he made a hole so deep that water seeped into it, and he took a long drink. Then he lay by his water hole, smiling. I'm starting to really think that this alligator is a bully. <laughs> The thirsty frog saw the water, and he came and sat very still not far from the alligator. The parched turtle saw the water, and he too came and sat still near the frog and the alligator. The purple gallinule, thirsty, came too, and stood near the water hole, quietly preening his feathers. The alligator smiled, but he did not move. If I take a drink, will you eat me? asked the frog. If I take a drink, will you eat me? asked the turtle. Or me? asked the gallinule. But the alligator only smiled his wicked smile, so the frog and the turtle and the gallinule went away, still thirsty. Yeah, I think this alligator's being a bully. The next day, still no rains came. And the frog and the turtle and the gallinule came to the alligator's hole again, hoping to drink, but the alligator still lay there smiling. Finally, the frog said to the alligator, Let's be friends. Yes, said the turtle. I like you and want to be your friend too. The purple gallinule also said, Yes, let's all be friends. I like you too. And the gallinule quietly preened his feathers. So here we have Mr. Frog hanging out right there with Mr. Alligator. I, I kind of wonder what they're planning with this. <laughs> then, slowly, 
the alligator turned to the turtle with his wicked wavy smile, and his jaws opened, cavernous and many-toothed, and as the turtle looked up at the great sharp teeth, his heart almost stopped, and he even forgot to pull his head under his shell, but just then... Oh, I'm on the edge of my seat. The frog skipped in front of the turtle and spoke, surprising everybody. Friend, he said to the alligator. Yes, that's what the frog said. And as the alligator looked at this tender, green, green frog with the gorgeous golden eye, and as his smile got wider and wider and his teeth seemed to get bigger, the turtle and the purple gallinule slipped into the water hole to drink. But the frog stood still and closed the sheath of gold over one eye, and the other eye almost popped out with all that feeling a green, green frog would have at such a moment. And then, then, then the purple gallinule, who had just taken his first drink, stepped in front of the frog and said, Friend! That's what the gallinule said as he stepped forward on his yellow feet and faced the alligator. Well, now the alligator was really smiling, as wicked a smile as ever he did smile. His great jaws and pink throat and big, sharp teeth were terrible to see. And as he moved closer to the gallinule, whose brilliant purple-blue feathers and bright red bill made him look so beautiful and so desirable, the frog and the turtle slipped into the water hole to drink. The alligator opened his jaws wider and wider and wider and then 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 the turtle who had just taken his second drink stepped in front of the gallinule and said friend and as the alligator looked at the turtle the purple gallinule and the frog slipped into the water hole to drink then the alligator opened his jaws wider moved closer and closer toward the turtle, but just then, then the frog, who was no longer so thirsty, stepped in front of the turtle, looked the alligator right in the eye, and said, FRIEND! The alligator's eyes seemed to expand with greediness, and his smile grew fiercer as he moved closer and closer to the frog. Then, then the gallinule stepped in front of the frog to face the alligator, but this time he did not say friend. The gallinule stood still, preening his feathers, and as the wind began to rise and blow, the frog and the turtle went away as fast as they could go. Now the gallinule was left alone with the alligator. He preened quietly, until finally he loosened a feather, a brilliant purple-blue feather. It's not very nice of his friends to just ditch him. Then the wind came and wafted the bright purple-blue feather ever so lightly until it danced just in front of the alligator's eye. The alligator looked up, startled at the flying purple-blue feather, and for a moment, he stopped smiling. Away flew the purple gallinule to join his friends in a safe and hidden place. The alligator was left alone by his pool in the sawgrass. So the gallinule distracted him and flew away while he could. That's pretty smart. Then the wind rose higher, and the sky grew dark, and across the sawgrass came a moving sound, like no other sound in the world. And the rains came, and it rained and it rained until there was plenty of water for all the thirsty animals living in the sawgrass. There's the rain falling down in the swamp filling it back up. Then the sun came out, and it was a happy time in the sawgrass swamp again. And in a pond deep in the sawgrass, the frog sat on a pickerel leaf 
and smiled a gorgeous smile of green and gold, and the turtle and the gallinule smiled with him. And each was smiling a smile so big, so smug, so knowing and secret, that had the alligator been there to see, it would have made him feel that his private world was ridiculous, and that the world of the three friends was the real and only one. And that would be it, as indicated here by the end page. So uh, let me know what you guys thought. I really liked it. I think it's a cute little book. I think that it's a really good lesson in friendship and using teamwork. Um, I've still got a couple other books up my sleeve. It'll be a while before I can really go out and buy more because quarantine. But uh, if you guys want, you can go ahead and request in the comics, comics, comments section what you would like to hear. And I'll see if I have it. And if I do have it, then I'll go ahead and read it to you. So thank you guys for having another splendid reading time with me. And I'll see you soon.